for an ogre. You notice a peculiar dagger protruding from the tough, leathery meat. yank the dagger free, leaving a narrow slit behind. the sharpest teeth could pierce it. Watch your back. Mystery meat. At least things have stayed interesting. Breathe deep and move. My, my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps? The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that? Love. Was that? <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormier, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Charmed, I'm sure, in more ways than one. We should have a chat, you and I, but not here. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There. Middle of somewhere. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. Call it a ninth sense. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary? Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain.
Come now. Why play hard to get when you're in deep over your tadpole head? One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. And what is madness but a denial of reality? Still, I have a feeling you'll change your mind before it's changed for you. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. I'll be around, watching you squirm like a tadpole through a nice, juicy brain. All those pretty little symptoms, sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Look what we got here! Another little birdie wanting to fly! Stop this thing! Yeah! <laughs> Flap those wings some more, and I'll feed you a worm! And you! Hope you got a stomach for rights! What's it bloody look like? We're teaching this here pipsqueak to fly. You want this little cave lurking what's it? Find your own. He's ours! As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Ask him the what? Oh. The goblin's nostrils flare, as if trying to judge you through smell alone. We're leaving. The water bird a gnome! Ain't we supposed to bring him to... I said we're leaving! There's plenty of sport and rich pickings out there for us! To eat. All right then. Fresh meats. Scared meats. Yes!
going on back there? Go check it out! Right. We'll get it sorted. <laughs> Something's on my mind. Cut me loose! Bagger Kamara, there's pustulant thugs. Well, get on with it. You saved me, now you'll extort me. That's how this works, yes? Uh, my own fault, really. I should have dropped my pack and outrun those bastards. Alas, take my pack if you can find it. The only reason those goblins caught me was its weight. I'll travel lightly from now on. Ignorance is alive and well, it seems. Deep gnomes aren't restricted to the Underdark, you know. I've lived in Baldur's Gate for years. I'm in search of a friend. I fear he's in trouble. See this? I gave it to him years ago before I left home. I found it around the neck of a thug in the lower city. It was speckled with blood. My friend, nowhere to be found. But I still have hope. I have reason to believe he's in the Underdark. Hopefully I'll pick up his trail from there. I always help my friends. On that note, <clears throat> I bid thee farewell. If we should meet again, well, we will have met again. Hmm. Shadowheart's attention is fixed on a damaged old statue. We... we should keep moving. You already know as much as I do. Best ignore it, as long as it doesn't hamper us too much. Give it a shot.
don't linger into the shadows. Let's get going. If not over, then through. Huh. I haven't seen that game in years. Give up now. These boots have seen everything. Missing children. Maggie Terrans, Marcus Terrans, Mathen Deach, Rochelle Kirk. Tastes like chicken. No chicken. Tastes like fish. Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. And what surprise is this? Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show is the brand of the absolute. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Unless you bear the mark, of course. Indeed. How regrettable that your meat must go unsavored. Food? Food. Not food. Friend. I've no use for the absolute. Or any god. I follow two masters only, gluttony and greed. The goblins understand my appetites. They sate my hunger for gold, and the rest sate my hunger for meat. Boss goblin give gold, we check brand, good deal. No talk. I am, by all accounts, a student of higher commerce and extortion. Make me an offer. Tempt me.
I am but make me an offer. Tempt me. I twice played serenade to my ears, my tasty kibble. We have a bargain. Take my bone horn. One blow and the ground will quake with my family name. Use it when the need arises, and never a moment before. Ogre kill everyone around, then Ogre eats them. Well spoken, indeed. Ogre kill everyone around. We follow the sense of blood and gold to all lands fertile, friend. And this land proves particularly fruitful. We will keep close. When you are ready, sound the horn. Names and heights have been carved into the wood over the years. The last two read Maggie Terrans and Marcus Terrans. Twins, perhaps. Traps, please.
Or someone there? This way. Violence hasn't gone unnoticed. It's about to be returned in kind. Now yours will be taken in turn. A fair exchange, perhaps. to meet your maker. Let the dice roll in my favor.
always a pleasure. Do you feel as flattered as I do? Fight it to dine with a devil. <laughs> Believe me, that was a devil's equivalent of serenades and roses. Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us, badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. There's no such thing as an absolute certainty. Let me play the devil's advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. If there's one quality all the denizens of the hells embody, it's ambition. Quality they share with many humans, come to think of it. I'm the foggiest. But, based on the evidence before us, we can make certain deductions as to why he sought out our merry band. Fact one. There's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. Devils aren't known to aid mortals out of simple kindness. Whatever Raphael wants, we must be the key to getting it, along with our tadpoles. So, we're safe for now. We wait. If I'm right, Raphael will seek us out again, and when he does, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. Go ahead, I'm listening. We all have our burdens, one way or the other. I question the wisdom of that decision, but sir, I'll be here. The devil, an old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse the farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? Refuse him, no matter how tempting the offer. No matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you. The cost's always too great. That's because you still have hope. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with. And then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure. But the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. Well met. That's the spirit. This devil, Raphael, flaunts his paltry wings as if he wants to impress us. You saw the red dragon slaying his infernal kin above hell's fires, did you not? Next to a dragon, the devil's a gnat. When I am Kithrak, I will take my queen Vlakith his head as a trophy. Githyanki knights, the riders that chase the Nautiloid. They are the commissars and enforcers of my Queen Vlakith's will. 
Vlakith bestows no greater honor. To wield a Kithrak silver sword is my destiny. I will earn my queen's favor, and I will conquer every layer of hell should she command it. The Geich are my kind's mortal enemy. It is not unusual for the Kithrak to give chase, to penetrate the hells. This is unusual. But I'm not one to question the wisdom of my queen. I can see but to the horizon. Vlakith's sight pierces the many planes. Chuk. Be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halsin, was it? He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a Zathisk purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant, order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. <laughs> now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. He seems sure we won't find anything. And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. But all that, take your time, I'll wait, nonsense. He's playing with us. Gazador, my old master, liked to toy with people too. Let them think there was hope right until the end. Until he snatched it all away. Creatures like them don't play games. Unless they know they can win. Maybe. But he's not the only one spinning a web for us. This is no ordinary Mind Flayer parasite. Who tampered with it, and why? What do they have planned for us? And why are we important enough that a devil comes knocking on our door? If we find those answers, we might have a chance. I suppose you want to hear about Cazador. My old master. Before the Mind Flayers took me from him. Before this strange, twisted freedom. Casador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. Not political power or military power. I mean power over people. The power to control them completely. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. He had me go out into Baldur's Gate to fetch him the most beautiful souls I could find. It was a fun little ritual of his. I'd bring them back, and he'd ask if I wanted to dine with him. And if I said yes, he'd serve me a dead, putrid rat. Of course, if I said no, he'd have me flayed. Hard to say which was worse. Thank 
you. But this isn't about sympathy. It's about knowing what we might be up against. The Mind Flayers aren't the only monsters out there. And they might not be the only ones hunting us. All I'm asking is that you keep your eyes open and watch out for anything lurking in the shadows. What more could I ask? Now, is that all? Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free and a true vampire. People think the biggest threat to a vampire is a cleric with a stake. It's not. The biggest threat to a vampire is another vampire. They're scheming, paranoid, power-hungry beasts. So why would any vampire give up control over a spawn to create a competitor? Trust me, it doesn't happen. I've already apologized. What more do you want? Unless you're looking for another nibble. No innocence. You have my word. Only villains that we need to kill anyway. After all, you know what I am now. I can fight with all my weapons. Teeth included. And if I happen to drain the occasional bandit during a fight, what's the harm? They're just as dead. Shall we go? I'm already feeling a little peckish. I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul. And I return to the shadows. It's grim either way. So why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Casador. Figuring out what's happening to us, confronting a god called the Absolute, and then finding time to kill my old master before he can control me once more? Yes, that's an option, but I wouldn't bet eternity on it. Bloody hells. Literally. Just when I think I've got a grasp on our dilemma, a devil shows up. <sighs> no matter. We've dealt with every other oddity thrown at us lately. We can handle this one, too. Now, as for this Raphael, he knows our secret. He claims he can help. What do you make of him?
No doubts at all. He seemed powerful and very knowledgeable about our problem. Not the worst prospect we've stumbled across. As long as you can look past what he is. I've made you doubt yourself. Sorry, not what I intended. Let's take time to think about it. Some food and rest. Things will be clear then. Hmm, or is it? Suddenly, I'm not so sure. Isn't it terrible when someone causes you to doubt yourself? Good, you got there eventually. I know people who work much like our new acquaintance does. You don't need a scourge or a rack to break people. Fear and self-doubt is sufficient. When actual pain comes, the victim's already done the heavy lifting for their torturer. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food. Us. Aren't you glad that I am? It's an effective trick. Watch out for it. And for Raphael. Fine. What's on your mind? I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. Fate, dost thou require a new... A question for our master monster hunter. How would you approach killing a vampire? A full-on vamp, you mean? Lure it into the sun, drive a stake through its heart. And that's not the end of it. The suckers are wily. And no offense. None taken. Wiliness keeps me alive. More or less. Amigos. Keep moving, stranger. Quietly. I told, told you, you to, to go. go. Death in your scent, but not in your words. Still, Still, you should go. My friend is injured. He needs rest. Of course he will. And then we'll return home. He calls me Scratch. You can do the same. We were attacked, we're cackling furry things on two legs. And their smell, it was strange, rotten, evil. You know the creatures he describes, gnolls. No, I won't leave him.
If it comes to that, I may. Thank you. Looking ahead, I wouldn't mind my step. wondered what people will say were when they find out the monster hunter is becoming a monster. I've faced countless perils and conquered them all. This will be no different. I've always had a soft spot for the confident ones. They always disappoint there. Corpse regards you lifelessly. Pack of knolls, claws, teeth. Let us deliver to Baldur's Gate. Bats in my day are
What's next, I wonder? Careful, I bind. Keep a blade close. There's no time to waste. Over than through. Something over there. for me. That might be worth a look.
step quick. Time for a new approach. No time to waste. See me. Can't slow down. This is better than nothing. Are watching me. 